KGI, Australia's next copper producer. Um, very high grade, plus 2% copper project. You don't see many of those anymore. The average copper grade, Chris probably knows it. It's probably less than 0.5% right now and in the world. Feasibility well advanced. We're only a few weeks away from releasing that. Near-term growth around the project. I'll go through that in some um, detail. We're finalising our funding plan. We've launched recently just launched an entitlement issues to get us through to FID. Off-take sign with Glencore, which for us is a is a uh, an absolute no-brainer and a great deal for us, and we think a good deal for Glencore. We're independent copper place. So we're exposed to the copper price. Experience management team and getting better. We'll announce today. We've employed our chief operating officer. Um, a very experienced guy, and uh, I think there'll be some people who are surprised. We've managed to attract him and a fabulous jurisdiction in Northern Territory, uh, very pro mining, and obviously in Australia, which is a safe place to do mining once you've got your approvals. The Gervoice project itself, you can see it's located, see if I can, oh no, you can look at it, um, about 350 k's east of Alice Springs, so it is very remote. That's one of our challenges. You can see I've circled Main Eyes there, and you can see the, the distance there. The road to the south of our project is a plenty highway. That is part of the Outback Way, which is a program of sealing across the width of Australia. So that'll be sealed. It's now fully funded. It was announced about three weeks ago. So that'll be sealed over the next two or three years. So we'll have a sealed carriageway from the mine all the way to Mount Isa within a couple of, a couple of years. <clears throat> so we're fully permitted. Got all our permits, all of our uh, agreements and uh, licenses, and we're very well supported with our tenements. We recently extended our mining leases for another 10 years, and we've got a great resource here, about 23 million tonnes, 2% copper, 460-odd thousand tonnes of copper metal contained in that resource. You don't see many of those at the moment. This is our project, the general arrangement of our project. So you can see we come in from the south from the Plenty Highway up to the project, up on Lucy Creek Road, head in past the camp and the solar away. So this project will be <clears throat> straight up and down, processing plant 1.6 million tonnes a year, crush grind, flotation, filtration. So very, very straightforward flotation plant, powered by a diesel solar power station, about 18 megs, um, all up. We'll have two open cuts and three mines over the history, or three underground mines over the history of the feasibility, what we're looking at in the feasibility phase. Mine life, we think, just above 10 years. Um, PFS is, was done in 2020, showed a very robust project, and that led to the funding raise to do the feasibility. As I said, nearly finished. Big step with the engineering happening. Um, you have Glencore now taking all of our product and significant resource upgrade all this year. So certainly starting to get to the sharp end of this business. We're nearly finished at CapEx. We're just finalising the back end now. We're, we're going to Glencore rather than going into containers. Um, we're finalising the OPEX with regards to the new mine plan based on that new resource. And then we're into it. The civil contracts tender has been received and we think feasibility uh, a bit before mid-year. Glencore agreement, um, from us, as I said, a bit of a no-brainer. Um, great to sell copper concentrate into, <clears throat> into another Australian company. Um, so we'll produce copper in Australia, um, and that for us is a, is a great outcome. It simplifies our transport business, so we don't no longer have to travel back to Alice Springs, go north to Darwin or south to Adelaide. We just go straight in, in bulk to Mount Isa, and then we drop it on the ground and we return empty. And um, we are benchmarked to copper, gold and silver. So we get paid for all those products sitting in the concentrate. Um, we reduce our emissions. Um, and as I said, it's great for local economy. So we think this is a great deal for us. Significantly de-risks de -risks our investment decision. Um, we'll get FID knowing we can sell all of our product coming out of Gervoise. Macro tailwinds, I won't talk about this too long, but I think everyone understands the move to EVs and the move to renewable energy means we need a lot more copper. I think Ivan Glasberg said um, just before he retired that we need another million tonnes a year, every year for the next 30 years to keep up with demand. It's just not going to happen. So um, there's no way that can happen. And that's what these guys are predicting. You can see this is the Macquarie, Macquarie charts with the copper chart in the bottom right. Um, you can see that gap around 2030. All going well, we bring this project into business in 2024 sometime. So we'll be right in the midst of this revolution. Um, copper price, 
really just either has to stay up or go further up. Otherwise, there will be not enough um, motivation to create more supply. So copper price will be strong. We got gold and silver credits. Um, it's a great little business. Experienced team, as I said, we just added to this team. We've got a great um, group already gathered there. I've been kind to myself and just said 30 years, over 30 years experience. I think by looking at me, you know that's a little bit more than that. Um, board of directors, again, I'm being kind. I've only got one here so I can make a joke, but saying they've got 100 years experience is being very, very kind to them. Um, but look, we've got a great and diverse board there, lots of miners, and that's what you need when you're developing projects. Corporate structure, about 390 million shares on issue. Share price closed yesterday, 43 and a half. Um, we had seven and a half million cash at the end of March. We've, we've just released or launched an entitlement issue to raise up to $24 million. Um, we got great uh, commitment from our major shareholders there, so we got about $8 million of that committed to already. Um, our supportive shareholder base, we've now moved in the last 12 months to a bit more institutional. We've got about 19% now in Australian funds. Um, our biggest investor, the Salim Group, 25%. They've been around for a long time, a very good and stable and supportive investor. Uh, Indonesian Group. And Dennis Wood, of course, who probably everybody in this room knows, sits at about 9%. Entitlement issue, so one for six at 37 cents. So at today's price, it's pretty attractive. Um, not underwritten, minimum raising of 9.9. .9. Uh, record dates actually today. Use of funds, obviously, to advance the project as much as we can with whatever we get. Um, we'd like to be in a position to order our long lead items. And by doing that, you can lock in pricing. You can also lock in some schedule. And for us, that's, that's the key to delivering this project and time is making sure our schedule is de-risked as possible. Um, if we get the full 24, that'll really give us a lot of advantages. We can start putting in place some of the civils work. We can start the pipeline. We can do some of that baseline work, bring the camp in that you need to do to maintain schedule and get people on site. And as I said, we've got great shareholder support. The top two shareholders have committed to the raising. The directors have all committed to the raising. And KMP have indicated they would take more if uh, the shareholders approve. Here's our development timeline. Um, lots of green ticks there. We've got all our permitting, as I said, last bit of permitting came in middle of last year. Um, resource definition and resource enhancement work uh, last year, a little bit of expiration. Uh, and we I'll talk about that a little bit later on, but it, this is a very exciting mineral field. There's plenty more to come. Updated resource came out total in January, as I said, about 23 million tonnes, 2%, so 460,000 tonnes of copper. Feasibility study nearly done. Early works and feed front engineering have commenced, and we're anticipating uh, FID early Q4 2022. This just shows how this field has developed over the last 10 years since KGL have owned the resource. So we started off with a minor copper resource of 113,000 tonnes at 1.3% copper, still not a bad grade but that included some lead zinc resources. Over time, we dropped the lead zinc resources off the resource that we report and what we're using for the feasibility studies. This is the copper project. You can see the grades above 2% and the tonnage has tripled. So the team really has worked very hard on this project for a number of years. Bearing in mind, we lost 2020 altogether to the due to COVID. The guys could not get on site due to the local communities. So to get it to this state um, by the end of last year or early this year, really, really good job by the, the team on site who worked very, very hard. But you can see the team's worked out how to get the best out of this resource and uh, I'll talk a little bit about that on the slides to come. This is Rockface. Um, it's our most high grade copper resource of the three. Runs three and a half million tonnes at just over 3% copper. It's also got some gold and silver credits. It is a number of lenses. You can see the, the, the main load depicted by the yellow and the north load convicted by the blue. It's about two thirds, one third from a tonnage point of view. The grade actually goes up as you go down. Um, there's a beautiful picture of a core tray there where I think Chris announced in one of his comments that it was geo porn. Um, that the top meter you can see there at 0.8 meters at 60% copper is just pure bornite. So that's the heaviest core tray ever lifted at Jervois. Um, massive sulfides, so you've got four meters at 20% copper another four metres or four and a half at 19% copper and two and a half at 12 or 13% copper. We've now delineated that very high grade massive sulphide about 160 metres up, up dip and down plunge about 30 or 40 metres wide. So someone one day will do the maths on how much copper is actually contained in that little patch and be very surprised. 
that grade obviously will be cut for the resource, um, but as you see, um, the EM is telling us that, that those ore bodies just keep going down. So we're very, very confident that we'll find more at Rockface. Um, at this point in time, it's not economical to drill 1,000 metre holes into the deeps of Rockface. We'll do that when we get underground, but um, we're very confident this thing just keeps getting bigger. This is reward. This is our biggest ore body. You can see this is the IP response to geophysical term, and it just sort of tells you where there's um, sulphides in the rocks. If I take away the IP response, you can see coming up at the pit, you can see behind there to the resource, the hatched outline, you can see the PFS designed open cut, and you can see the underground from the PFS. We have a great IP response to the south, another great IP response to the north, uh, and those are just uh, upside. We've drilled the reward gap, which is bet between the northern part, northern to the right of the screen, the northern part of the open cut and the underground. We drilled that late last year. We just got those results back in the last couple of days, so we'll announce those. But they will be in the mine plan um, in the future, and they're part of the resource. But um, we just drilled a very deep hole to the south of the hole, KJC 434. Hit some mineralization there, and the, we always put this slide up, or this number up, but you can see it hits. It's got some spectacular silver as well. So you've got, I think it's 40 meters at 730 gram silver. Um, something like five metres at 2,600 grams silver. So we're not going to mine that in this pass. It's not in the feasibility study, but certainly there's some upside. This is the exploration story. You can see the J fold. That's the dominant geological structure here at Jervois. There's a fault that runs north-south to the west of us that's dragging the toe of that J curve around. You can see reward. The colour is an IP slice at about 250 metres down. Um, you can see the IP response there at Reward. You can see the IP response at Rockface and at Bell Burden. You can see why we use that as a best indicator to go drilling. Um, we believe there's plenty of work to be done to the north of us along that trend north of Reward and north of the slide I mentioned. You can see in between um, Reward and Rockface, we've discovered the thing we're calling Cox's Find. We've drilled two holes into that at the moment. Um, one went two and a half metres at 2% copper. So we certainly think there's more upside. The real benefit of Cox's Fine South is its um, proximity to rock face. It's about hundred metres from the rock face underground when we get there. So um, all these things are upside. From an exploration point of view, we've got north, um, reward south, reward north that I spoke about. So we certainly think there's a lot more to find here. We'll release our feasibility based on the current resource, um, but we certainly think this is a generational mine. ESG, as I mentioned, and my talk, um, mining uh, is always a first mover. We bring a lot of prosperity and we bring a lot of change to where we go. It's very important that you manage that change. It's very important that you include your landholders and your traditional owners in your business plans and your partners in your business. Uh, if you're, they're your enemies, they're your enemies for a very long time. So we always like to be friendly. Um, this is a very uh, barren part of the world, um, but there are some nice uh, little critters out there that we will obviously look after as we go through here. And we just released our first sustainability report. We probably are ahead of a lot of other juniors at this stage of the development phase, um, but we obviously think it's critical that people we employ uh, think along the same lines, and this is a critical part of mining in Australia. So summary and outlook, um, we have a globally significant copper ore body, over three deposits. Our approvals are all complete. We're in the final way lay, sorry, the final stage of the feasibility study. We've secured our offtake, which we're very proud of. We've got an experienced team that we're building and we're a pure play copper project exposed to the copper prices where we like to be. So a few steps forward, um, finalise the funding strategy. Clearly, um, it'll take a lot of money to build this project, complete the reserve, finalise the feasibility study. The final investment decision, as I said, early Q4 2022 with a bit of luck, early works and mobilised the site and we're building the team to deliver the project. Thanks, Tim. Thank you.